SeaTac ERP was architected from the ground up with the requirement of material traceability in mind in order to serve companies and in regulated industries like medical device, aerospace and defense, food and beverage. So in this demo, we'll show you how standard inventory practice in SeaTac ERP establishes an unbroken line of traceability from raw materials to finished product and how traceability reporting is both bulletproof and streamlined to help you maintain perfect traceability while also staying efficient. Traceability starts with the proper receiving process to receive inventory and raw goods. In receiving, I select the PO line to receive and SeaTac auto populates the item number, expected cost and quantity on the PO. SeaTech even supports the automatic generation of your own internal lot code scheme based on a lot code scheme you can define. In this example, we're receiving a batch of 100 pounds of raw flour. You could just as easily be receiving in a widget or bar stock, but in this case, we'll use flour. We're going to follow the line of traceability from the raw flour through to a work order for dough, then to a final work order for a cookie to sell to the customer. You may also want to set an expiration date or a date code, input a vendor specified lot code. You can even define your own custom fields to track at the receipt level. If incoming units are individually serialized, you may need to scan or input serial numbers on each individual part you're receiving, which you may do so here. When you click receive, all of this information captured in receiving will flow through to individual FIFO, first in, first out, inventory receipt layers. This receipt information may be printed on barcode labels, as you can see here, may also be scanned into inventory bin locations or stocking locations, or even delivered directly to the floor to be used in production. Many companies also choose to upload the packing slip or heat certs or batch certificates associated with the delivery in the documents section of the PO receipt. So you can see I clicked into the PO receipt object here and I can find a place to upload my documents. I can reprint barcoded serial labels or lot labels. Next, when an item is used in production, SeaTech ERP recommends the next receipt layer of inventory to pull from and shows you exactly where that receipt exists in your warehouse for you to pick from. There's my new 100 pounds of flour. There's my lot code. It's a bin location called new. It's suggesting an older lot first on a FIFO basis. If inventory is serialized, you may scan the serial number into the pick list for validation that you picked the correct serial number. When you pick from a receipt of materials, as I do here, I'm picking 41 pounds of flour from my lot of 100 pounds, when you pick, SeaTech keeps track of all of that receipt's traceability-related information associated with that receipt. So, the system knows that this amount, 41 pounds, of this part number, raw flour, from this receipt with this lot code, this date code, this particular cost, and so on, this was what was used to produce this batch of dough on this work order. When you pick the part, that data is saved, tracked, and stored with no additional work. All you have to do is pick the part. Note also that you may pick across multiple lots of the same part as we see here. You can pick multiple lots of the same part number to fulfill a single work order. SeaTech will maintain traceability of any and all lots used on a work order. Moving along with our example, we're manufacturing a certain amount of dough on this work order, one unit of dough. Because this work order is a build to stock work order, the dough part number itself is going to be received into stock in its finished state once we're done with production. It's the complete receive button here. As such, this new receipt of the finished dough will also contain all the traceability information our original raw goods receipt enjoyed. As such, we may assign a lot code to the batch of dough we're manufacturing here.
As you can see, the order lot code is DOE 123001. Lot codes may be manually entered or auto-assigned through a lot code scheme. If we were building widgets, I may want to issue serial numbers for each quantity of unit that I'm manufacturing. Often, companies are required to track which sub-tier serialized components specifically went into each upper-tier serialized manufactured part. CTEC will let you create those associations and tie them together here with component piece to top-level serialization. If I had a unit of manufactured part of dough serialized, I could tie this component serial that I picked to that top level serial. This would satisfy even the most stringent of lot serial control requirements. When you have completed the work order, CTEC requires a complete receive transaction to remove the raw inventory goods from stock and to finish the manufactured part into stock. So, you can see here I'm about to receive 41 pounds of raw flour from the lot that I picked from that bin new in addition to one serialized component called Part 1, PRT1. Those will decrement from inventory as soon as I click this Complete Receive Product button here. Meanwhile, the batch of dough will increase in inventory. This will create its own unique lot record for the batch of dough. This is referred to as an internal receipt, which may also be barcoded. It may be put into finished goods stock, it may be taken directly to the next step in production. As you can see here, I have a parent order for finished cookie, and we'll see immediately that the dough that I just produced is now available in stock to be picked and used on my top level work order for my finished cookie, which I'll ship to Falcon here soon. And here is the lot of the quantity one batch of dough that I just built on the previous work order. Additional parts, subassemblies, and or sub batches may be pulled together here to produce the final finished product that will be shipping to the end customer. And again, by virtue of picking this product from a unique FIFO receipt layer, we're maintaining that line of traceability through production. We'll pick the material we need. And again, you may choose to serialize your finished parts, assign lot codes, etc., before shipping to the customer. We'll manually assign a lot code here. Again, those can be automatically assigned through a lot code scheme. Finally, once the part is invoiced, all traceability information will be stored and associated with this single invoice shipment record, ship quantity one, at which point we will relieve the batch of dough I previously built in addition to the other PRT3 component I picked. We'll create an invoice to close the work order, register the shipment, and drive the sale to the customer. All traceability information is now stored and associated with this invoice record, including all costs of production, for instance, purchase material costs, labor and overhead, outsourcing, all lot and serial information, here's the lot that was used, the dough, I can drill down, all documentation, all work order and inspection history, everything. CTEC even prepackages traceability information, documentation for you which aggregates lot and serial origin information across multi-level bomb production into a single professional PDF you can deliver to the customer. Reporting is easy as well. If a customer calls in and all they have is a serial number, you can just punch in the serial number, click submit, and find any and all history around that serial number, warranty information, production history, and so on. For a picture of just how powerful and seamless traceability is in CTEC, let's drill down from the very highest level financial report, the income statement, profit and loss, and follow along with the line of traceability that was maintained for us automatically through the transaction lifecycle. On the income statement, we can see a total amount of sales and drill down to the types of transactions driving that number. From there, you can drill down to the source invoices responsible for that number. As you can see with the object ID field, I can drill down even to the source transaction, the specific invoice transaction responsible for the $2,000 of revenue here. There's my invoice record for the cookie I sold to Falcon. From this invoice record, you can get a breakdown of cost distribution for all material and labor as we saw. You can print a traceability document. In the details, you can drill down further to see what specifically went into that product. You want to do that drill down here. Click on details slash serials. If you click on 94.2, build, this is indicating that this batch of material that was used on the final work order to the customer came from us internally. So click into it. It's gonna be the record of the work order. I can click into that and see all production history. 
You can drill down further from this. Click into the invoice record of the dough that was built all the way down to the raw flour, the purchased raw materials that were used, and click into that source receipt. This is my original purchase order receipt. From this receipt screen, you can see the cradle to grave ancestry of that receipt. From its use in the sub work order for the batch of dough, that's what we had here, to the final end customer sale of the cookie itself. Imagine if you had a recall notice on that particular batch of flour, how easy it would be to look up the receipt and get a quick digest of any and all impacted customers that consumed from that original batch of flour. This same paradigm applies to numerous industries, medical device, aerospace defense, CTEC ERP accomplishes bulletproof traceability seamlessly and efficiently.